going to look at what the latest round of the National Church Life Survey has to tell us about views and actions in the churches around ecological engagement, earth care, earth care and mission, what actions people are taking in advocacy and the actions that churches are taking collectively in this space. So first of all, we're going to look at the National Church Life Survey, what it is about, the purpose of that survey and how it runs. Going to then look specifically at what the environmental survey research has aimed to do, why that's being conducted. Then we're going to look at some of the results for churchgoers' views and actions in the environmental space from the 2016 NCLS, and we'll compare it with the previous round of the NCLS in 2011. And then we'll have a look as well at the activities that are going on in local churches. So first of all, let's have a look at the National Church Life Survey in 2016. Well, it was the sixth round of a five yearly survey that's been conducted since 1991 in Australia. This is a survey that is primarily about resourcing churches in relation to their church health and mission. And it also includes a wide range of other research areas, including environmentalism. The survey in 2016 involved churches from around 20 denominations. Around 3,000 local churches took part. Uh, and about 260,000 people from those churches filled out a survey, including people in former leadership roles. Uh, and we'll be looking here specifically at around 1,000 senior clergy. So they're people in a senior clergy position, a, senior, a, a clergy pace, placement in churches, or if there are no clergy in a particular church, uh, a person in a senior lay role with that church. We'll be looking at a sample of the churchgoers who filled out a survey, 1,300 of them, a random sample, and we'll be looking at results from what's known as the operations survey. So that's a survey of church programs and structures and staffing filled out by over 2,000 churches. So we weight these results so that we can make them as representative as possible of the Australian churches and church going population. So the purpose of the research, in the last two waves of the NCLS, so that's 2011 and 2016, there's been a considerable focus on environmental views and actions in the churches. So that's so that we can try and understand what's actually going on in the churches uh, for individuals and for churches collectively. We've wanted to understand what's influencing these views and actions. And we've especially been wanting to do that so that we can provide people who are working in advocacy roles in and with the churches with data to support what they're doing. And we've also wanted to contribute to the academic literature as well. This is really important. Uh, there has not been survey work of this scale uh, for church going people in Australia. So this is uh, across many of the Australian, Australian denom denominations and it's countrywide as well. Okay, so let's start with churchgoers' views in terms of the church's role in caring for the earth. So we ask people to please select from a list of options which most closely matches their point of view. So they were able to respond that caring for the earth should be an essential part of the mission of the church and over a quarter of people uh, indicated that that was closest to their position. Another option was that caring for the earth is part of the, part of the mission of the church, but there are greater mission priorities. So uh, just over three in ten people selected that that was their view. Another quarter said that caring for the earth should be a responsibility of the church, but not mission. A very small priority, a very small number rather, either responded that caring for the earth shouldn't be a priority at all in the life of the church or that they didn't know. So what we see there is strong support for engaging with earth care as an aspect of mission, but minority support for the idea that it's an essential part of that mission. So also a substantial minority, so around a quarter of people, they understood earth care uh, as a responsibility, but they didn't understand that as mission. So we actually asked this identical question back in the 2011 NCLS as well. So we have data on how this has actually changed over the five year period. 
If we have a look then at this striking result for the purple line here, so that's that caring for the earth should be an essential part of the mission of the church. We see a substantial increase in that result over the five year period. Now, we didn't change the wording of this question at all. So this is a major result that I think is really a testament to the kind of work that people have been doing on the ground to engage with these issues. So I think especially about the papal encyclical, Laudato Si, on uh, caring for our common home that Fr Pope Francis released several years ago, uh, and the wonderful work in the lead up and following that's been going on in the Catholic churches, uh, and the wonderful work in other denominations as well, to raise the priority uh, of caring for the earth uh, in the mission of the church. So that increase, we see uh, across denominations in general, we especially see it in the Catholic churches. Those who say it shouldn't be a priority at all, or they don't know, that's remained fairly steady across the five years. So really it's that essential part of the mission that's increased, and the other two part of the mission with greater priorities, uh, or that it should be a responsibility but not mission, um, those have increased. So. We don't often see these, these kinds of rises in this short a period of time uh, in survey questions in the NCLS. So this is really uh, a very striking and encouraging finding. We have a second question, which was, do you believe that Christians have a responsibility to be environmentally active? Again, there were a range of responses and people could select one. They could say, yes, and I am personally active. And 3 in 10 chose that option. Uh, yes, but I'm not currently active, and over a half chose, chose that option. A very small minority said they didn't believe that Christians have a responsibility to be environmentally active, and uh, more than 1 in 10 were unsure. So again, we've asked that question before. In fact, for the previous two rounds of the NCLS, we asked that question. So we asked it in 2006 and 2011. So we can see how those views have changed. So over the 10 year period from 2006 to 2011, we've seen an increase in uh, levels of activity, levels of, of environmental activity. Now that was especially in the first five years of the period. Um, the proportion of people who say, yes, they believe that this is a Christian responsibility, but they're not personally active, has stayed relatively steady. Um, the people who say no, that's remained fairly constant. Uh, and there's been a decrease in the proportion of people who are unsure uh, about whether or not Christians have this responsibility. So in summary then, we've seen a shift in the first five year period uh, in people's views and levels of activity. Um, we haven't seen much of a shift here uh, in the last five years, 2011 to 2016. But referring back to the question about earth care and mission, what we have seen is an increase in the proportion in the last five years of people who say uh, that earth care should be an essential part of the mission of the church. What we haven't seen a shift in in the last five years is people's sense of the priority uh, that should be given to uh, activity on public issue of issues of importance by the church denomination. So back in 2011, it was 12% of people who selected this option among a collection. Uh, and this time around, it was 11% of people. So 11% in 2016. So we have seen an increase in views about the essential priority of this area of mission. But when it's put in the context of other issues of concern, other public issues of concern, it remains a, a middling to low uh, level of concern. When we look then at levels of engagement through action among church people in terms of uh, civic type actions, we see that the levels of mobilisation are fairly low. So a fifth of church people have been part of an environmental event such as Earth Hour in the past five years. So that could have been uh, more than one, but at least one event. We see a, a fifth have voted uh, on the basis of an environmental issue. 17% have given money to an environmental group and small proportions of people, less than 1 in 10, have participated in a conservation activity such as land care or bush regeneration 
have elected, a, have contacted uh, an elected member of parliament um, or their local council. So a very small proportion, around uh, one in 20 people uh, have been a member of an environmental group. Very few have joined a protest or a demonstration. So just less than half have undertaken any one of those activities. We also ask questions about um, consumer level actions. So uh, mindfulness in terms of consuming energy and water. Uh, and those results are available on the NCLS website for you to look at if you would like to. Let's look then at church level activity. So in the 2016 NCLS, we asked uh, a single informant uh, responsible for filling out a survey about their church's activities. So that could have been a church leader or a church administrator to indicate which of these activities they'd run at their church in the past two years. Top of the list uh, was having celebrated a day or a season with an environmental theme, such as the season of creation. So 16% of churches reported having done that. The remainder of the activities were much lower proportions of churches, so run a children's activity on an environmental theme. Just 8% of churches there having conducted an environmental audit of the church's building, similar at 7%. Just 2% of churches uh, had a church environment team in the last two issues that organises events or activities, for example. 2% had acted to conserve biodiversity. Just 5% had run a Bible study on an environmental theme. So two thirds of churches hadn't actually done any of those listed activities in the past two years. The format of this question changed compared to the 2011 NCLS, so we can't actually look at how this has shifted. But this is still, still fairly low levels of mobilisation when it comes to these particular activities in churches. We also asked a question about whether any of the following that you can see there, the following activities listed, usually happen at this local church. Top of the list was collection of recyclables from attenders and or use of local council recycling services. Now, for in, ten, for in 10 churches seems low there, but it could often be that churches that are actually utilising commercial collection services for waste, and that they're not eligible um, to use the local council recycling services. Three in 10 churches say that they usually purchase environmental friendly consumables, such as recycled paper for the office or cleaning products. Uh, over a quarter of churches, 27%, said that they usually included environmental concern in worship, for example, through hymns or songs, through prayers, uh, or through sermons and homilies. Composting, just 8% of churches uh, explicitly choosing environmentally friendly food for church meals, 6% of churches. Provision of information about environmental, environmentally friendly ways of living to their church people, 5% of churches said that they did that. So uh, over 60% uh, of churches did one or more of those actions. We can compare this on some of these questions with the results in 2011. So what we find there is that there's been very little change between 2011 and 2016. And in fact, each of those results is within the margin of error for the survey. The exception there is the provision of information about environmentally uh, friendly ways of living. So that was 9% in 2011 and 5% in 2016. But even in 2011, that was still a relatively low proportion of churches doing that. So really there's not been a considerable change of what's going on in churches there. We asked those clergy and lay leaders who have preaching responsibilities to indicate of how often they would touch on environment or caring for the earth in their preaching over the course of a year. So a very small proportion, 6% said that they often did that. More than two in 10, 21% said they sometimes did that with 28% uh, saying occasionally. So a large minority, almost half, said that they either rarely or never did that. So we see perhaps low to moderate levels of engagement with this uh, when it comes to preaching. We asked the same question in the 2011 NCLS. So what we can see there is very little shift 
over that period of time. And particularly uh, when we look here at the margin of error, there's very little change between 2011 and 2016 in terms of preaching activities of clergy and senior lay people with preaching responsibilities. We also asked for an indication of what, what kind of things churches have in place for their buildings. So rainwater tanks and, and uh, water recycling, over a quarter of the churches port reported that. Having energy saving measures, uh, energy efficiency measures in their church, 15% of churches reported that. 14% reported having solar panels or solar hot water heating as a part of their site. 14% reported specific water saving measures in their church. Just 3% reported sourcing electricity uh, from a green power provider, a government certified green power provider. Over half of churches didn't have any of those measures in place as part of their buildings or site. So, so minority engagement with each of these issues uh, and just under half of churches having done uh, one or more of these to improve their buildings or site. So in summary, the results from the 2016 National Church Life Survey and comparisons with the 2011 NCLS indicate that congregational engagement with environmental issues and with earth care remains low and that there has been little change in terms of levels of action between 2011 and 2006. There has, however, been a moderate shift in churchgoers' views about environmental responsibility uh, and about uh, earth care as a critical aspect of mission. There's been a shift in views about responsibility since 2006. There's been a shift in the last five years about the importance of earth care. But really, overall, this hasn't translated into increased prioritisation or action. There's some really encouraging results there about the good work of people to raise the profile uh, of this important area of ministry. But we're yet to see uh, concrete change in action. But this will hopefully follow as this advocacy work continues. If you want to learn more about this topic area, see more results from the NCLS, uh, various infographics and papers, you can go to ncls.org.au.